to give you a solution. But right now, today, that time is up. There's no more I'm giving you lies. We're not African. We're not black. We're not Jamaican. We're all from the 12 times. To give a warning. We're not judging you, we're ready. Well, have we seen anything? Yeah. Have we seen anything that has changed our people? Changed our neighborhood? What's your name, sis? Gigi. Gigi? So, oh, Gigi, what is your nationality, sister Gigi? Levite. Levite? Okay, sis. So you understand that you are an Israelite from the tribe of Levi? Yes, yes. That's what they say. Okay, so let's find out if that's the truth or not according to the Bible. And you grew up in the, you grew up in the church? Yes. Let me ask you this. In the church, well, what denomination, if you don't mind me asking? Christian. Christian church? In the Christian church, growing up, did they ever teach you that you were an Israelite? No. No. Okay. So let me ask you this. Did they ever teach you about your history in your church? No. That's funny, because the Bible teaches about not only your history, but it is, in fact, your history, and that you are, in fact, an Israelite, according to the Bible. Right. So, let me ask you this. You are so-called from the, the, the land of Haiti, right? How did the Haitians get to that land, that island of Hispaniola? How did they get there? Slavery, right? Through cargo slave ships, would that be safe to say that your, your people, your ancestors got to that island through cargo, way of cargo slave ships? Okay, let's see here. Let me get around the chapter 28. You got it? Yeah, fifth grade. Verse 5. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So these curses that Moses is speaking of is the curses that you read through Deuteronomy chapter 15, chapter 28, verse 15 through 68. These curses will come upon the Israelites for not keeping God's commandments. One of those commandments is like the Sabbath day. What day do you usually go to church? This is a Friday nights and Sundays. Okay, Friday nights and Sundays. What's the day that they say is the day that you're supposed to worship? Sunday. Sunday, okay. But the Bible says different, right? Let's see what the Bible says. Hold on, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. The book of Exodus chapter 20. Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. What's the first day of the week, Sister Gigi? Sunday is the first day of the week, Gigi. Let's go. But the seventh is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So if the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord God, what is the seventh day? If the first day is in fact Sunday, what's the seventh day? Saturday. So what day are you supposed to be worshiping God? Saturday. So let me ask you this. Have you ever asked your pastor why? No. No? Why not? No, I not Are you afraid to ask him that? Because because we're gonna tell you right now, whatever you bring out of this Bible that you don't understand, we would behoove you, sis to ask us those questions right. so that you can get the proper understanding because what we have to realize is from the time that we were brought here as slaves things like Christianity and learning that Sunday is the first day of the, of, of the day of worship the women can wear pants that women don't need a man that all they need is God all those things are forced upon us in slavery right. and they're still instilled in us to this very, very day you understand? and we're not being taught the truth according to the Bible, yeah. from our churches, from our pastors, okay. all right? So we're going to go through the curses to identify that we are, in fact, the children of the Bible and that these curses came upon us from not keeping God's commandments. Right. Yeah. Verse 50, uh, verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Huh? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with Ships. So God is saying to the Israelites that he would bring it into the Israelites that they were going to Egypt again with ships. 
You want to be all familiar with the story of Moses, leading the people of Israel out of Egypt? Right. How did they get out of Egypt? Okay, so did they use a ship or did they, how, how did they get out of Egypt? They walked out of Egypt. Read that again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So God said he will bring them back into Egypt again with ships. But it's not, this is Egypt. That's it. What? What? This is Egypt right here. Because that's how we came to the shores of America. That's how we got to the shores of Hispaniola. That's how we got to the shores of Central and South America. By way of cargo slave ship. Men, women, and children. You understand, sis? This is in the Bible. So why, if this is in the Bible, and this is God's word, are we not learning this in our churches? This is a question that we must ask our pastors. Because if we really want to get out of the, the, the mere fact that, let me ask you this, in, in Haiti, or even here in America, and the, 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 the struggle of the, the so-called Haitian people, is it, are they at the top of society? No. No, we're at the bottom of society. We're the ones struggling with two or three jobs just to feed our children. Right. Sometimes just to feed ourselves, just to keep the lights on, keep the roof over our head. God says that these curses will come upon the Israelites because of not keeping God's commandments. Why? Because they're not taught. Give me that, Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. The knowledge of God should be in the lips of every pastor, priest, reverend, whatever you want to call them. Because they're leaders. They're father figures to us. Some of us don't have fathers. Some of us don't go up with that. So the father figures that we should have are the men that should be teaching us how to live. And give us the knowledge according to God to live. What's the knowledge? Wait. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest lips should keep knowledge. So the priest lips should keep the knowledge of God. So what is the knowledge of God? What, what knowledge should they keep? And then shall seek the law, what? seek the law uh -huh. at his mouth. So every time we go to a church, the first thing we should be hearing out of the priest, the pastors, or the reverend's lips is the laws of God. That's right. How we're supposed to live according to God. What God says that we're supposed to do in order to serve him, worship him, love him. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Because that's what we are here to do. We are here to show our people who've been lost in America, thinking that they're Haitians, thinking that they're Jamaicans, thinking that they're Cubans. We are here to show them that not only are you not those things, but you are God's chosen people. And God has a requirement for his people, the Israelites. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. And now Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? So God requires something of the Israelites. It's very specific and he's going to break it all down for you. Come on. But to fear the Lord thy God. So you got to fear God. Wait. To walk in all his ways. you got to walk in his ways. Come on. To love him and to serve the Lord thy God. So you got to love and serve God with all that you have. With all, your, with all that your body allows you and with all that you have. Right? Come on. How do you do all of those things then? How you fear God, walk in His ways, love Him, how you serve God. Wait. With all thy heart and all thy soul. With all your heart and soul, wait. To keep the commandment. How do you serve, love God, fear God, and, and worship God? To keep the commandment of the Lord and His statue, which I have commanded thee this day. So, so you yes, ask something. What commandments does God give us to keep? Well, let me ask you that right this then, because it's a little too vague. What commandment right now should you, as a woman, be keeping? Let me show you something. I'm going to show you this one. That's why we're out here. That's why we're out here. We're out here to teach our people the truth. And not only the truth according to God's words. I know it, it may sound like we're going all over the place, but God says in order for us to get the true understanding, we must go precept upon precept, line upon line, pull a little, there a little. What? That's the only way we're truly going to be able to understand what exactly God wants us to do in terms of our requirements to walk, love, fear, worship, and serve God. So read what you got. First Corinthians 11. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Sister G, are you married? 
Royal Mail. Okay, check this out. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Uh -huh. And the head of the... Verse, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I... Even as I also am of Christ. So this is Paul, the apostle, saying that you should follow me because in everything I follow Christ. The same way as us brothers right here, we follow Christ. We keep God's commandments and the faith in Christ. Let me, let me see something in this. Take a look at what that says. That scripture. We need the patience of the saints and we are those that keep God's commandments and the faith in Christ. So if anybody says, well, you're an Israelite, you can do that. Everybody says, okay, if you believe you're an Israelite, that means you don't believe in Christ. That's a lie. Because even Paul was an Israelite. He kept the commandments, and he's telling us that we should follow Christ, just as he does. Right. Read Now I praise you, brethren, uh -huh. that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinance as I delivered them to you. What is another word for ordinance? What is another word? Commandments. Exactly. Read on. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, uh -huh. and the head of Christ is God. So it's giving us order now. The order that is God is the head, the head of Christ, Christ is the head of the man, and the man is the head of the woman. So that means that in submission, in terms of submission, it's the woman to the man, man to Christ, Christ to God. If the man don't believe in Christ, we're going to touch on that. That's a great question. Because that's, a, that's the problem that's pervasive in our communities. The, 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 the lack of order among our people. So of course you have the women that run the household and the men are weak. Mentally and physically strong, but mentally weak. Spiritually weak because they're not taught the ways of God. They're not taught to keep God's commandments. Because in that, hold that, 1 Kings 2 and 2. In that, they understand this verse thing. If they understood that they have to keep God's commandments. Real quick. First Kings chapter 2, verse 2. Then back to First Corinthians. First Kings chapter 2, verse 2. I go the way of the earth, but thou, but be strong. Let's see, what's your name? Brian. Brian. Brian GG, what we're about to read is how a man becomes a man in the sight of God. All right? I how a man takes his role in the sight of God. Read. I go all the way of the earth. Uh -huh. Be thou strong therefore, and show thyself a man. Uh -huh. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. How do you do that? To walk in all his ways. Uh -huh. To keep his statutes uh -huh. and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it's written in the law of Moses. So all the commandments that are given to men to keep, to the Israelites to keep, that's when we keep them, that's when we become men. Until then, we just build in, in a man's frame. We have big, grown men, 50, 60 years old, but without the laws of God, they're still bears. What? You understand? So go back to First Corinthians, chapter 11. What we're showing the sister right now, and we're showing our people right now is the order that God has set up. And even though the sister had a good question, the sister's question was, how do you know, how do you keep that order if the man doesn't believe in God's word? We're going to show you that right now. First Kings, First, First Corinthians, First Corinthians, First three. chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. I'm sorry, what's your name again, brother? Brian. Brian, Brian. This is the order that God has set up. Listen up. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So the order is God, Christ, man, woman. So now the sister's question is a very profound question. How is it that that order can be sustained if the man doesn't believe? If the men don't believe that they're not only that they're Israelites, but they got to keep God's commandments, right? The sister says she's married. So hold that. Go to First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse twelve. But to me, the rest speak. I'm sorry. Stop at verse ten. Verse ten. Yeah. And unto the married, I command. So are you married, brother Brian? Not yet. Lord's will. You will be. Lord's will. Come on. Let not I, uh -huh. but the Lord, mm -hmm. let not the wife depart from her husband. You hear that? 
the main thing is that we keep the family intact. Keep the family intact. Although he does not believe, we're going to show you, according to the word of God, how you can still maintain, although he may not believe. Yet. Yet. All right? Because that's a part of faith, too, Sister Gigi. Come on. But if she depart, uh -huh. let her remain unmarried, uh -huh. or be re reconciled to her husband, or be reconciled to her husband. So if you have to depart because of his unbelief, because he wants to cook pork, he wants to cook on a Sabbath day, he wants you to walk around in pants when you're not supposed to, he wants you to break the laws of God, if you depart because he wants you to commit sin, the Bible says, still remain unmarried, or be reconciled unto him. That would only mean he would come into his right mind. That he would start to keep, he would want to start keeping God's commandments because he loves you. What? You understand what it says? Come on. And let not the husband put away his wife. Same thing with the husband. You hear that, Brother Brian? You can't just throw your wife away for any reason. All right? Except for fornication. All right, come on. But to the rest, speak I, uh -huh. not the Lord. Uh -huh. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with them. Uh -huh. Let him not put her away. So if a brother, if you have a wife that she doesn't believe in his Bible, she wants to do everything that she wants to do, don't put her away. Because as long as she loves you enough, she's going to start repenting right. and start following and doing the things that you say for her to do. Right. Come on. And the women, likewise the women, sister, come on. Which have a husband uh -huh. that believeth not. So if your husband don't believe, read. And if he is pleased to dwell with her, when it means pleased to dwell, that means he loves you. He does No matter what, he doesn't want the two of you to be separated. Come on. Let her not leave him. So that's what the Bible says. The Bible says don't leave him. If he loves you, he ain't going to go nowhere. But here's what he will do. Read. For the unbelieving husband uh -huh. is sanctified, what? sanctified uh -huh. by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. You understand what Paul is saying there? If you're keeping God's commandments, the one that you love, or that believes that they love you with all their heart, doesn't want to leave you for any reason, they're going to be sanctified. They're going to repent. Eventually, they're going to repent. They may not believe the way you believe. They may not go as hard as you may go hard for this truth, for the word of God. But because they love you, they're not going anywhere. First Corinthians chapter 7, and verse, verses 10 through 15. Look at that. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. 3 and 1. 3 and 1. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. First Peter chapter 3. Verse 1, likewise, ye wives, uh -huh. be in subjection to your own husband. I need you to read that again, Sister Chichi. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband. Sister Gigi, can you explain that to me? You got that look on your finger. Whoa, wait a minute. Well, explain that to me. What does that mean? I'm going to read it one more time, okay? Good. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband. Come on. Sister Gigi, who does that mean? Be in subjection to your own husband. Exactly. So whatever he says, yeah. anything. Exactly. Except, except if it goes against God's will. Once it goes against God's will, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Can't do that, honey. You want me to cook on a Sabbath day? No, can't do that. You want me to cook on Sabbath day? Not supposed to cook on Sabbath Let's get that. Exodus chapter 16. Okay, it, go back. Finish it. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they are they also may without the word be won by conversation of the wives. The conversation goes into your conduct, your behavior. So that your husband will be won by your conduct. She's, he sees that although he doesn't want to keep the laws, but he sees you in a dress. He sees you preparing for the Sabbath day. He sees you, he sees you getting his clothes ready or whatever it is for work. He's being submissive to him. 
not being loud in a, in a abrasive to him. Yeah. <laughs> touch, the, touch the nerve on that one. But yeah, but that's that. But when he sees that, that's I, I, it's totally understandable because we, some of us say have had wives that it was hard for them to grasp at first. But because we love them and because we love God, we we will make sure that we work on ourselves first so that they can see the example in us. So they make, they can have the room to change. You understand? They will take patience, and then with that patience is faith. So they take their faith to be increased, to see it in them, and for him to see it in you. Because you gotta make that effort. Being that you don't want your first, I'm, I don't see him here. So if you are here first, you have to make that change in yourself. Right. Alright, sis? Here you go. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband. Uh-huh. That if any obey not the word, they also, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. Jump down to verse 7 real quick. Verse 7. Likewise, ye husband, it's for you, Brian, dwell with them according to marriage. Because you may have a wife, she may not totally understand. She may not understand why it is that they have to prepare a day before for the, for the, for the Sabbath. She may not understand why we don't have to, why we can't keep Christmas anymore. Why we can't celebrate Thanksgiving. And I got a question, it's about that dark. Okay, we'll deal with that. All right, now go to Exodus. I want to answer your question about preparing for the Sabbath, right? Exodus 16, 22. Book of Exodus chapter 16, verse 22. The book of Exodus chapter 16, verse 22. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread so what will be the sixth day of the week? This is the GG. Friday. Friday. Come on. Two omers for one man. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. So the next day is the Sabbath. So we're going to the people were gathering up twice as much before the Sabbath day. So read on. Unto the Lord. Uh-huh. Bake that which ye are to bake today, uh-huh. and see that which you will see, and and that which remaineth over, lay up and keep it until the morning. So, in a sense, to bake, obviously, it means to bake what you got to bake the night before. Seeding goes into boiling or cooking. So, you will prepare everything that you will need to cook for that Sabbath day. You will do it the night before, Friday before sundown. Understand? You understand that, sis? You understand that, brother, buddy? Yes, Prepare Friday morning, or like now, where the sun goes down a little bit earlier. Sometimes we get off like 5, 4, 5 o'clock. So we don't have as much time. You could even prepare the day before that, on Thursday. Just to make sure everything is in order before the Sabbath, before the Sunday and Friday evening. What? Because the Sabbath day is from Saturday evening, I mean from Saturday, Friday evening to Saturday evening. All right, Sister Gigi, all right, Brother Brian, you understand that part? All right, Brother Brian. No, that's not true. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 4. What shall we be doing on the Sabbath day? Leviticus chapter 23. Verse 3. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh, the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest huh? and holy convocation. It says a holy convocation, that means a holy gathering or a separate assembly. So that's when the Israelites come together and they rehearse the righteous acts, like keeping the Sabbath, keeping the high holy days. We go over things like what we lost, because this is our heritage, this is our customs. So we lost these things, so now we have to, re- we have to remember them, prepare our minds again, because when Christ comes, we're going to have to know all these commandments, all of them, to do them so that we won't be cursed to death. You understand? So we don't get it? Alright? You got another question, Sister Gigi? Okay. You got a question about what? The chart, right? Where do you see yourself on that chart? Uh, Benjamin. Benjamin, okay. So where are you from? Jamaica. Jamaica. Okay. But how do you know, like, uh, how do you know, like, which one, like, how do you know for sure who went where? I know who went where. Yeah. Okay, that's a good question. Give me Deuteronomy. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And start from verse 15. One more time. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. 
but it shall come to pass uh -huh. if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So because the Israelites didn't keep God's commandments, something was going to happen is what Moses is telling the Israelites right now in the wilderness as we read. All right, come on. To observe, to do all his commandments See? and his statutes which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So when it says these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee, verse 64, all these curses will come upon the Israelites and overtake us. So what would happen to the people if they didn't keep God's commandments as a curse? We're going to read it right now. Verse 64, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people uh -huh. from one end of the earth even unto the other read again and the lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other so we will be scattered from one end of the earth being taken from the west coast of africa to the caribs right towards the caribbean is a the first of us were dropped off at and then scattered from north Central and South America right. from 1619 on. Remember, friends, friends. Uh huh. Friends, friends. Like, my question would be uh, 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 because let me show you why they didn't have to do that. Because first and foremost, they already knew that the Israelites were here in the west coast of Africa. They, the Ibu tribe, the tribe, the Ashanti tribes, what? Right? They already knew that those people were already Israelites. Although they may, they may not know in terms of the so-called white men that put us on those boats, but it's according to what we're reading right now in the scripture, what was prophesied. That we, that's how we would know that the so-called West Indians were landed in the islands of Jamaica, Barbados, the Cayman Islands, and so on and so forth. Okay, that's what always bothers me. Uh -huh. I, I was trying to figure out like how to know what the, the Levites were and all that. Like, like I, I knew for a fact the place the plane was like saying, saying, right. you bet the man, you get on that shit. You get back, you get on that shit. No, no, no. And it has to do that because according, it's according to me that, uh, what is that? Uh -huh. it because like I said, what we, what, a lot of times what we don't understand in terms of what God does, it's above our strength. Because God already said exactly how he's going to do it. In terms of bringing us over our cargo slave ships. You understand? And in terms of us, for us to understand who we are, he would put us in places specifically so that we can recognize, okay, these are the so-called West Indians or the so-called or the Benjamites according to the Bible. Yeah. These people in, in North America, these dark people from North America, these are the so-called African Americans, but God calls them from the tribe of Judah. Right. From the island of Hispaniola, the slaves that were brought there, those are the Levites. Now we don't know exactly who we are in terms of exactly which tribe we're from. That's all that we're gonna get when Christ comes. Okay. We're gonna get all of that to us. But right now, in terms for us to realize who we are, we have to come to the understanding that we are, in fact, of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. You understand? That, we, that we're going and facing these curses because of our disobedience to our God. You understand? And for us to wake up, that's what we have to see first. And let's show you that too in the book of Ezekiel. But we'll read that real quick. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 1. On. The king's heart uh -huh. is in the hand of the Lord. So the Bible says the king's heart, that means the rulers. The ruler's heart is in the hands of the Lord. They can't do their own thing. Right. They do what God intended them to do. Right. You understand? So where were they for? Wherever they put these people is exactly where God wanted them to go. Right. Specifically for this fact, Ezekiel chapter 37, and the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 16. Right. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah. So Judah will be the kingdom of Judah, which will comprise of the tribes of Judah, Benjamin and Levi. What? All right. So once you once you start keeping the commandments of Lord's will, those of you will start coming coming to the school and actually con, con, uh, congregating and learn more about the biblical history of how these tribes were separated into two different kingdoms. So Judah would be Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Right? 
and for the children of Israel, he's going to write upon it for Joseph, uh -huh. for the stick of Ephraim, which is Ephraim again, for Ephraim of these ten tribes right here. Come on, these nine tribes, excuse me. For all the house of Israel, his companions. Uh -huh. And then join them, one another, into one stick. Because remember, there were two separate kingdoms at one point. The house of Judah, the kingdom of Judah, and then the kingdom of Israel. So now he's telling them to bring them together. Come on. And they shall become one in thine hand. One nation, the twelve tribes of Israel. Come on. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, uh -huh. Wilt thou show us what thou meanest by these? That's what the question you ask. How do you know which one went to this island and who's, who's who? That's the question that the people are going to ask. Read it again. Verse 18. Verse 18. When the children, when the Israelites, read, of thy people, when Brian asked, read, speak unto thee, uh -huh. saying, Wilt thou not show us? What thou meanest by these? What you mean by having these twelve tribes, these twelve tribes, and these people that are black and Native American and Hispanic as one people, as the Israelites? How do you how do you figure that? Me say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is Ephraim and his companions, we, which is in the hand of Ephraim uh -huh. and the tribes of Israel, uh -huh. his fellows. And I will put them with him. Then with the stick of Judah. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Come on. And make them one stick. And make them one family. One nation. The nation of Israel. Wait. And they shall be one in mine hand. Uh -huh. And the stick wherein thou writest, thou, sh thou shalt be in thine hand uh -huh. before their eyes. So you will, you will be able to see it for yourself. So that's why we read before that the king's hand, the ruler's hand, is in the hand of the Lord. Because God ordained this to be exactly the way it is, so that when you see it, you would identify, okay, that is who I am. Because according to the, the scripture that we read in terms of the prophecy, that the Israelites would be brought on slave ships, they would be slaves in a land that they didn't know, that would also show us and enforce that God is still dealing with his people. Right. That God still loves his people and are trying to bring them back to him. Alright, so let me give you let me, let me, let me give you one more law so that you have an understanding. Did you put a a, a, a flyer button? Let me see let me see that right there, you know the tassel you got right there? Oh that's a belt, that's just a belt. Okay. Oh it's your fringes. Okay. Let's see you in the spirit, brother. Let's get that. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes uh -huh. on the borders of their garments. So you got to have fringes on the borders of your garments. The borders of your garments would be the border of your shirt. If you had a jacket on or a sweater on, it would be the edge of your shirt. Yeah, right? Yeah, but I, I got to make it myself. I understood. But that's what we, again, that's what we tell the We're out here to teach our people right. what they lost. Right. You understand? So we don't. Throughout their generations, uh -huh. and that they put upon the fringes of the borders a ribbon of blue. So exactly how you have it right there, the, 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 board, the ribbon of blue on top of the fringes, that's good. But it needs to be on the borders of your shirt. Right. Let me get, right, give me that on Deuteronomy 22, verse 12. I'm going to show you it has to be on the whole end of your shirt. Right. We're going to show you that with the scriptures. Because the, the, the scriptures are not, the, the laws are not grievous. Right. It's not vague. Remember, we grew up in a Christian church, and a lot of things that we had questions about, we couldn't get no, no answers for them. Right. Pray on it, brother. Pray on it, sister. And the world will reveal that thing. No! God hasn't revealed in his Bible plain as this. That's right. Deuteronomy. Chapter 22, verse 12. Come on. Thou shalt make them fringes upon upon the four corners of thy vesture. Upon the what? Up, upon the four corners of thy vesture. So not the four corners, but the four quarters. So one, two, three, four. You understand? Come on. Upon your vesture, we. Wherein thou coverest thyself. So everything you cover yourself with, like since if you wear, let's say you don't wear, if you wear a blouse, right? Either the blouse has the fringes in the border of blue, 
and your skirt has a fringes in it embedded in blue. You understand? So like your shirts, your jackets, your, your, your undershirts, let's say you work and you have a, a, a uniform, your undershirt should have fringes in a bit of blue. I got, I got to do it on four corners? All four corners. All the way around the edge of your garments. That's right. Got it, brother? All yeah, okay. oh, praises. All oh, praises. So, like, yeah, I appreciate you, brother. Hey, no problem. That's what we got here for, brother. Lord's will, you will start to grow in the understanding so you can be the very same for another brother and another sister. All right. You understand? We just, right now, this example is for you and for you, sis. We're examples to show you how you can teach your people. First and foremost, by example, and then through the word of God. For you to come out and teach your people. And for you, sis, to teach by your example. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org